Hey everybody, Jazzy here. 2023 kicked off with a surprise from Clay, an actual update to single player and a massive one. This update sought to patch up a massive shopping list of bugs, most of which have been known issues for years. This was a follow up to the promise made way back in the 2021 DST roadmap where Clay said that they'd be revisiting the single player ports and making an effort to patch up some of these many known issues. One of the major bugs that just got fixed was this weird mechanic where second Secondary maps of a world would regenerate when you world hopped in a linked world. So for example, say you started in Shipwrecked, you went through the Seaworthy over to Reign of Giants, you assembled the wooden thing and then you went through the portal. This would completely regenerate your Reign of Giants world, but would also delete your volcano map back in Shipwrecked. So the next time you visited, you would get a brand new volcano. So a lot of players would use this bug to regenerate their volcano without having to regenerate their entire Shipwrecked world. And that was useful if you wanted to megabase in Shipwreck, but you also wanted to harvest multiple volcano maps for stuff like obsidian, elephant cactus, and coffee bushes. The reverse thing could be done to regenerate your ruins in Reign of Giants while keeping your overworld completely safe. That exploit is no more. As of this update, the only way you can create new secondary maps is to regenerate the entire world through world hopping. So that's the bad news. The good news is, for the first time in the history of the game, building on secondary maps like the ruins, the caves, and the volcano is actually compatible with long-term worlds. You can have a base in these maps and not worry about all your work getting blown away when you world hop in another world. So this got me interested, specifically with Shipwrecked. I started a new run over on Twitch and I'm trying out a volcano base for the first time. And I've been learning that, believe it or not, the volcano can be one of the safest places to live in this DLC. And I'm gonna go over a few of the reasons why. First, there's the seasons. In monsoon season, you get heavy rain, and most of the islands will eventually be covered in puddles that spawn poisonous mosquitoes. I think it's the most dangerous time of year because of how puddles can completely disable your base structures for an entire season. In the volcano, you will still deal with that very heavy rain, but puddles will not spawn. This means all of your structures are 100% safe during the season, and you will never hear the sound of a mosquito waiting for that moment of brief distraction to sink its beak into you. I hate mosquitoes with all of my being. In dry season, the ambient temperature seems to be the same as the rest of the world, rising substantially during volcano eruptions. But on that topic, one of the greatest advantages to volcano living is your proximity to the altar of sacrifice. This structure will accept offerings that can help you to delay volcano eruption during this season. You can feed it eggs, feathers, live animals, a bunch of other stuff. I like to give it eggs for the first dry season, but eventually you're going to want to locate your doidoys and bring them upstairs so you can harvest their feathers and eggs for easy and renewable altar appeasement. Altar appeasement? The other massive benefit to basing in the volcano is complete and total freedom from crocodog raids. Matter of fact, you don't need to worry about any mob raids while you're up here. And just saying that in a guide is pretty much guaranteeing that Clay will add Dragoon Raids tomorrow. You're welcome, gamers! You also don't need to worry about any seasonal bosses while you're up here. Seal NATO can't scale a volcano, and Tiger Shark doesn't care much for swimming in lava. I'd still recommend fighting each of these bosses at least once, because the Iron Wind and the Dumbrella are important items to get in any shipwrecked run. Now onto the challenges of a volcano base. The most immediate disadvantage is a lack of food sources. The only natural food sources you will find up here is monster meat from dragoons and coffee beans from bushes. Neither of which are incredible options. Butterflies do not spawn from flowers, and birds do not land on the volcano. Bees will emerge from bee boxes, but will not actively visit flowers. As a result, bee boxes never fill up with hut. Yeah, first thing you're gonna wanna do when setting up a volcano base is getting a food source up and running ASAP. Now this could include spider dens, berry bushes, monkey pods, wild boar houses, Pretty much anything you can relocate. I like to set up some fish farms close to the volcano, then just dip over every few days for a bunch of fish. You can also make your own muscle beds for cheap, or an Ice Maker 3000 for accessible filler. Also, remember that even if you're going with a pure shipwreck run, you'll want to make it Hamlet compatible, because you can craft a brain of thought, which will unlock every recipe in the game. 
including all of the pig houses from Hamlet. Shops like the deli can be very useful for feeding a player when paired with a town pig who can hook you up with some oinks. The grocer is a great shop, but getting three eggplant from farms is going to be painful for you. But remember, the floral shop sells berry bushes and specific seeds. As you dig out the magma piles around the volcano, you're gonna discover many, many critters. They're nice to have around for the free light and cooking, but can be a major fire hazard if you're not careful. There used to be a bug where you could turn them into safe, permanent light sources by leaving the volcano while the critter was active. Alas, that too has been patched, which was unnecessary if you ask me, but that's conversation for another video later. So what this means for volcano basers is that if you are going to hang upstairs during hurricane season, you need to be very, very careful not to leave items on the ground that could be blown through a crisher during strong winds and carry that fire straight into a flammable structure. This means walling off any farms that could be harvested by winds. You can wall off the crissures with stone or limestone walls. The walls just need to be three units away from the crissures to prevent any fires. I just hate doing this because you end up with a bunch of ugly crissure pens that prevent you from moving around freely in your own base. For me, the eventual solution would probably be to have a separate base downstairs specifically for hurricane season just to be completely safe. The other thing that's gonna impede your building is obsidian boulders. These things can't be mined out. You need explosives to clear them. My personal favorite method for this job is the volcano staff. You'll get these as you fight quacking over and over, but it's also feasible to craft these at the workbench. You have a decent chance of trawling up red gems and fire staves in deep ocean while you're trying to spawn quacking, and you can use the obsidian you harvest to craft more volcano staves. Casting the staff also creates creates lava pools, which can be extinguished with ice to make obsidian, which will really maximize your harvest while clearing these boulders. But before you go clearing out the entire volcano, just understand that obsidian boulders are actually renewable and have a chance of respawning at their original location during dry season. I'm not super familiar with these mechanics, so I don't know if they could be blocked with structures or not, but either way, it seems better to clear as you build rather than clear all at once and risk having to clear again when you're finally ready to build in an area. You know, it's kind of like building in a DST forest. You just clear as you go. Overall though, I'd say you have much less of a workload needed to get a volcano base in a good spot. Downstairs, you will be putting down sandbags every monsoon season until you can grind out enough crafted flooring to protect your base. You'll be dealing with seal nado and tiger shark and crocodog waves every year. Volcano basing does have a similar startup cost. Lots of resource relocating, but the end game with the volcano setup seems much more relaxed to me. And as someone who doesn't like to be distracted while base building, I very much look forward to the change of scenery. I plan on streaming my volcano base over on Twitch for the next couple weeks, and would love to have you join me. That's Jazzy Starves on Twitch. I hope you found this guide useful, and please let me know what you really liked about this massive update. The first major single player update we've had in many years. It's great to see these communities come back to single player. It's a wonderful game, and I'm glad it's still on Clay's radar. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.